Okay, so we'll start just by adding in circuit works. And then we'll open up an ECAD file. So I would just go to our circuit works menu here, go to open ECAD file. And then from there, we'll select this cell phone, which I think is an IDF uh, 3 uh, file. So if we just go ahead and open that, it will open up the circuit works window, uh, or it'll open up a separate window for circuit works. The interface, as you can see, is relatively familiar with most um, most programs. So we have a start menu here. Uh, we have a, a sort of ribbon style toolbar across the top, and then. Uh, we have our graphics view here, which contains a graphical representation of the ECAD data. And then we have our tree view uh, down the left hand side. Okay, so within our tree view, if we take a look, we have uh, information about the board that's come through, i.e. the shape of it, any cutouts that are within there, uh, any layer information, uh, non-plated holes, uh, plated holes, which we have, you can see 99 of. We have 551 components uh, on the top and bottom of the board. We have a, a keep out area here. Okay, so that's just a sort of reference. And then any annotations that you've you've added in um, to the ECAD data as well. Okay, so um, if we start by looking at the components, as you can see, there's 551 and they're displayed in various ways. Now, um, if we look here, we have this 0402C component. As we select it, you can see every instance of that highlights in the graphics area. If I expand that, I can actually get through to the uh, the instances of those individually. Okay, so uh, with regard to the symbols that we're seeing, um, we have a, a sort of star on top of some of the components and we have an exclamation mark over the tops of others. Right, so we'll talk about the, the library at this stage. Um, when you import this data into um, SolidWorks, it references a library of components to, to generate the models. Anything that's already built in SolidWorks isn't flagged. Anything that needs to be built in SolidWorks is flagged. So if we just open up the library, what we'll find is that 0402C, for example, is already in the library. It looks like this. This is its data path. This is the information about it. Um, and you'll see here that as we go down, there are uh, components with very levels of detail. With this one, for instance, we've got some text on the top. Um, anything that's not built in SolidWorks um, can be built automatically, or you can uh, separately create the part and then uh, assign it its name and all the properties and then it will come up. Now if you let CircuitWorks for SolidWorks build the part automatically what it will do is it will take the outline of the shape and if we just go ahead and select that and have a look at the properties for instance this component has a height associated to it um, so it will take the, the, the outline shape that you've defined and the height and make a relatively simple re representation of that component uh, for you automatically. If you want anything more complex, then you'll, you'll need to edit or can create it yourself. Okay, so uh, we have the, the star indicating that some components aren't built. We also have this, uh, this exclamation mark as well. And the exclamation mark basically means that a component has been defined. You can see we've got this buzzer here, but no height has been defined for this buzzer. So currently it's only an outline and that's how it's represented uh, in the graphics area here as well. Okay, so if you want to add a height, you can do this uh, at this level. You've got a height option here. And you see as I start to add a height, it changes from wireframe to, to solid. And we'll just turn, turn that off. When you're... Uh, Now, with regard to um, 
this properties dialog box here. Um, it's quite useful um, because you can do things such as add a height to it. And the properties that we're seeing are actually for the uh, top level component, if you like. If I drill down a level further, so I'm actually going to the instance of that component, you can see that we've also got uh, various other properties for that. So things like the, the reference designator, um, the XY value, so that's its position relative to the board, where it is, um, its rotation, so you can see as I start to change that value, uh, the preview starts to update uh, to reflect that. Let's go back to 270. Uh, you can send it to the top or bottom of the board, uh, just from here. And if we have a look at the bottom, it might be a bit messy on the bottom, but uh, you'll just have to take my word that that uh, that is there, it's B301. Uh, let's go back to the top and set that back to the top like so. So these are sort of various ways of positioning, um, uh, filling in information about our instance or our sort of top level component, if you like. Um, now with regard to uh, sort of prior to in importing this into SOLIDWORKS, um, you might not want all the information, you, you might just want uh, little bits and pieces of it. So you have the option to filter in and out components on the board. So for instance, if I don't want that buzzer, I can right click on it and I can filter it out and that then disappears. If I want it back in, I can filter it back in. You can also do this with individual instances. Uh, you can right click on, a, on an instance, you can filter that out and similarly back in again. If you want to know what you're, you're looking at, you can zoom to fit. Uh, sorry, zoom to selection, should I say, and that will just zoom in on the area where that component is. Let's just go back to the uh, full view there and go back to a top view. Okay, now also uh, we have some sort of advanced um, options for filtering. So I can do a, a component filter and I can base my filter on the criteria that's listed in the filters box down the right hand side. So let's say for instance that I want to um, filter for all components under a certain level, you can see that a certain height, I can do that. Or let's say I want all the components on the top of the board, I can do that or on the bottom of the board or whether they're placed or not placed on the board. It's relatively easy to, to, to get to those and the filter is not just for components, it can be for holes, uh, traces, pads, outlines, all, all the things that you see here. And we also have some more advanced filters, so if we go down to the uh, filter section on the right hand side you'll see you've got a basic tab and you've also got an advanced tab and within here you can filter out components with rules so uh, if I just delete that one out to begin with so you can choose to either include or exclude component names part numbers or reference designators beginning with or containing a uh, certain text so if I for instance here type in coil and add that rule in you'll see that it grays out the uh, the coils in my feature tree or in my tree should I say um, Okay, I'm just gonna again delete that rule out because I don't want it. Okay, so now with regard to importing um, this model into SolidWorks, there's um, there's various ways you can do this. So um, as I, if I was to import the whole model, in what would happen is it would scan through all the components in the tree. Any ones that weren't created, it would create them for me. It's also possible for me to um, to build components. Um, at the click of a button so I can right click on this one for example and I can select build model and what that will do in SOLIDWORKS is it will just create um, that part for me in the background again just using the simple outline and the um, the height property that is associated with that part you can see at that stage that um, the flag indicating that it's uh, it's not built has disappeared uh, and if we look in our library, we can see that that component has now been added. Okay, now let's have a look at importing the, uh, the whole cell phone into SOLIDWORKS. So we'll just close down our document in the background here, and then we'll build the model.
Okay, so at this stage, if there are any warnings still present in your file, it will just let you know. So it's telling us here that we've still got eight zero height components, uh, which sort of SolidWorks will model as 2D sketches. So at this stage, you can either continue to build or you can cancel uh, that dialogue, uh, address the issues that you've got, uh, and then and then build it. So we'll just ignore that and we'll go ahead and build. And this will take a little while uh, to build all of these components. It's got, uh, if you look at the status bar down the bottom, it's got 81 components to build. Now it's taking time because this is the first time that it's it's built these components. After you've been using it a while, uh, the chances are you'll have built up quite a comprehensive library of components that you'll use and then this process will be much quicker. For instance, if I was to uh, close this down and reopen once it's um, once it's created all of the components and then re-import it back in, it would be pretty much instant going from CircuitWorks into SolidWorks. Okay, so now you can see that the process is complete and um, we'll just minimize the circuit works window. And you can see that it's imported all of that data into an assembly where every component becomes a part in our tree. You will notice that the board itself comes in as fixed and everything else it comes in as underdefined. That's an option, so you don't have to have it like that if you don't want to. You could instead um, have those components constrained. Okay, so now we've got this in, um, what can we do with it? Well, first off, maybe let's take a look at the, the board. So you can see that it's created the board. Um, the keep out area is, uh, is shown as a sort of translucent uh, volume, if you like. Um, if you are looking to create these boards and these components from scratch, it's quite important for it to work with circuit works that you follow the uh, the naming convention that's there already so you can see here that it's named um, some of these extrudes and cuts board outline for instance um, it needs that for, for circuit works to work um, <clears throat> so we've got our board in let's take a, a component at random if we just open up that part there you can see the component is fairly simplified again if you wanted to um, add additional things to this component, that's fine. Um, what we'll also find is that if we go to File uh, Properties, all the information uh, from CircuitWorks with regard to the properties propagates through to the file properties in um, SolidWorks. So um, this is good with regard to creating your bill of materials because you'll have all of that information there that you can access uh, should you need to. You also have uh, information that comes in as assembly level so for instance here if I look at the component properties it's got the component reference that's come through as well um, we can also if we want to uh, draw that information by annotating components so if I put the reference designator in and then just add that to all the the components on the top you can see that come through like so And of course, if we want to, we can remove that as well. Okay, so um, in this case, we've we've bought through the ECAD data into SolidWorks. Um, maybe we're not happy with the board so we we might want to make a change to that so if we just switch back to our board which is here we can go in and we can just edit uh, the existing sketch that's there and i just want to put in a, a fairly obvious change so uh, we'll just model in some additional volume
and switch back to our assembly. So you can see we've got quite an obvious change to our, our board now. And then what we can do is perhaps we'll drag some of these components that are in the keep out area onto this section here. Okay, maybe you take a bit more time placing those, maybe you'd make them into place, but uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, that's fine as it is. Okay, so once you've made your changes, you may need to communicate those changes with um, your electrical engineer. The electrical engineer, now you've made those changes, may need to do some more work on this. So once you've made your changes, it's very simple to get that back to um, to a, a format that he can read. So if we uh, export back to CircuitWorks, Okay, you can see it's currently processing in the background. And uh, now you can see that we've got uh, two windows on the right hand side is our original board on the left hand side is the uh, the revised version. Uh, we've got this nice compare tool where we can compare the two open documents in the uh, the window and that will tell us that the board shape has changed and also things like what component has moved and where it's moved to which is uh, good informa information to get to. Now once you're happy with that you can save that out as one of the, the file formats is listed there. Your electrical engineer can import that back into his software uh, and make the required changes. Once he's done that, he may want to send it back to you so you can reread it into SolidWorks. But you have a bi directional link between the two there. Okay, so if we just have a look at uh, one more file here, uh, let's get rid of the assembly and the board in the background. We'll open up this file here. Uh, the only reason that I'm opening this is because um, new to 2013, we now have uh, additional support for traces and uh, pads and files. So we'll have a look at how it deals with those. So um, you'll see that we've got our 190 traces there, our pads and our wires. And um, for, for ease here, what I might do is I might just use my filter tools to filter out all components on the top of the board. And we've got a big keep out area that I might get rid of as well. So let's just filter that out like so. Okay, now if we build the model in SolidWorks, Again, we get uh, just our warnings that we might want to address. Okay, so you can see you get all that information through. So that information may be important to you, it may not be. I mean, if you're creating a render of this, for instance, you would want those there um, because it just looks more realistic and um, you'll get a much better result. But we do have the, the capabilities to, to bring that information in now. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the demonstration. Thank you for watching.